instruction, safety instruction, how to uh, behave in the lab. <clears throat> so uh, read the instruction carefully and understand all this. You can read. Carefully listen to the technical staffs. There are many other staffs will be available lab. You have to listen to them, and uh, uh, <clears throat> you know do not compare your result with your friends. That is very important in any teaching lab. Right. So what will happen? We will be giving two a uh, number of different sample. We will be preparing and we will be giving to the uh, students uh, different samples. So it is not necessarily all of you are same sample. Hardly one or two students will have the same sample. Okay. So don't try to find out that who is having what sample or this thing. So you may get result for some and another, and the other person may not get that one. Right. So like that. So this you have to go through this instruction very uh, uh, carefully. There is safety instruction also added to the system, added to this list. Um, anyway, I put this one in our classroom file. Right? You can read it. Okay. So let us <clears throat> go straight away to the uh, uh, analysis. Uh, as we mentioned that this is vocal text pickup, make macro and semi-macro quality analysis is one thing, and one Indian author book also given. These books are available in our library. You can take it uh, when you get the opportunity. Otherwise, you can look at it in our website. I think last time Professor Baskar told you that you may able to download this thing for free of cost on some of the website also. Uh, but it is available for 400, 500 rupees. If somebody is interested, you can really buy, purchase it. Okay. So this is the list of anions and then uh, cations. Basically, acid radical and basic radical will be given to you. Uh, in our undergraduate laboratory. <clears throat> so this also you can go through it later. Uh, let me uh, uh, go to the actual analysis. Right. So as I told that when you have a book, you write your sample number. You will be given sample particular number. Note down that number. That is the first thing. Because we will be noting down what is the sample given to particular student. And for example, if 122 is a number given to one student, and that particular student's name and 122 will be recorded to us. That is what our staff will give to us. So based on that, only we will be evaluating, right? So that is very very important thing. Not only this thing, this this practice is, is uh, let us say in future you are going to uh, clinical lab, and probably this is pandemic situation. People are collecting sample for COVID, right? If they don't name the person on the sample matching, right? So unnecessarily the COVID positive will be going negative or negative is going as a positive. So the first practice in our lab, any lab, chemist lab, biology lab, anything, anywhere, right? So naming the sample and <coughs> comparing with the, exactly the person. That's the important thing. Uh, another thing that no characteristics of the salt. So you have to mention that whether it's a solid, liquid, or solution, or the semi-solid, gaseous compound, whatever it is. We are, we are not going to give gaseous sample or liquid sample to you, but general practice is the state, color of the sample, whether pure, pure colorless sample, white sample, or any colored sample. Right? That, is, that also will give some indication. And later, you have to write the solubility. I will tell you about solubility a little later. Okay. First thing is that, <clears throat> You go to uh, see these are the some of the uh, sample under corresponding color of the uh, salt mentioned here and lead, chromium, copper, iron salts will have red color or close to red, different shades of red, like paint company address control. These compounds will have different shades of red, not exactly all are same red, okay, different shades of red, right? Similarly. The hydrated salts of magnesium cobalt will have pink color and and so on, right? So list is there. So that gives the idea about that you may have see lead oxide is brown, whereas lead uh, uh, oxide, you know, the lead variation in the stoichiometry, you see the color change also there. Lead sulfide is black, and uh, this Pb3O4 is red, and the Pb2O2 lead dioxide is brown. Right. So these are the indications about what our possible salt that one, but it's not confirmation. There are many salts which are colorless. Mostly we'll be dealing with the colorless salt uh, in our undergraduate laboratory to avoid the copying. Okay. So first thing that what you do that 
you will be doing dry heating of the sample taking little bit of the sample putting into a test tube right uh, uh, professor baskar already explained to you how much quantity you have taken all this thing so you are supposed to have small spatula the size of the spatula will be uh, you know if you take it it will be around to uh, full of that uh, cavity part of the spatula if you take it it will be around 2 to 3 milligram that's what the amount required for this kind of analysis okay so that much of sample you add into a test tube and just heat it in dry condition using uh, bunsen burner okay so when the color changes from yellow uh, white in the normal room temperature and changes to yellow there may be chances of zinc oxide or any other zinc salt similarly if there is no uh, black ring not accompanied by the burning or water so it, it turns black but there is no water or something like that so it may have copper manganese and nickel salts and so on so the uh, if it is yellow you may have lead oxide or any other lead salt it, it is initially brown and uh, again retains brown color on hot condition also uh, you know you may have cadmium based salt here so it is initially um, red or turned back turns to brown or black right so when hot and cold condition changes it may be iron based salt right so does not change color it may have calcium magnesium magnesium strontium barium sodium potassium salts right if some if there are some gas evolved so this is the nitrate nitrate bromine iodine so what this says is that this is the preliminary test look at that in the title itself a preliminary test right so these are all preliminary observation which will give the idea this may have this kind of salt nothing beyond that right just based on preliminary test you are not supposed to confirm anything that this is the salt given to you or sample given to you okay so uh, another thing you now when you have this kind of notebook what you have to write it that you know you will be writing from the beginning let's see You'll be writing from the beginning, right? You will be writing that color of the salt, everything, and then as I mentioned, that uh, you know three columns you are writing. So it is mentioned that take a small quantity of the sample. How we are going to write that? I I have taken small quantity of sample. Even in the observation notebook, you have to have this practice. So this is instruction given to you by us. But when you are writing, you should not give back instruction to us. right so what you have write is that i have taken small quantity of sample or small quantity of sample was taken in a dry test tube and it was heated so right? what you will be writing uh, will you write in the observation white color change to yellow color on heating this is the observation then here what we are going to write you will be writing that uh, you know it may be presence of zinc salt right similarly when go down go down flame test we are going to flame test now he it is mentioned that dip the platinum wire into concentrated hydrochloric acid so you will be given platinum wire these are very costly we have uh, kept some 5 6 platinum wire <coughs> you can use it when you get a chance so you have to dip the platinum wire in the concentrated hydrochloric acid solution and touch that tip into the uh, the salt right and the salt and normally you have to take small quantity of salt in a glass um, plate or watch glass plate right so from that you touch that one with this uh, spatula and show to the uh, flame when you show that one to the flame bunsen burner flame and you see that golden yellow flame that actually you know bunsen burner flame last time professor sir explained clearly that there is various part of the flame but majority of the Uh, it will be mostly blue in their part with different shades of the blue so now look at that if you see that the flame is turning to yellow so there is a chance for sodium salt so how we are going to write small amount of sample was dip into uh, sorry uh, platinum wire was dipped into concentrated uh, hydrochloric acid in a watch glass then into the sample it was shown to the flame that's how we have to write so the golden yellow color flame was appearing 
may be the presence of sodium salt you have to write like that if this is blue is violet color you have to write blue is violet color was seen may be presence of potassium salt like that so these are all very very interesting color all coming from the apple green color from barium salt right so you you have to write like apple green color was seen presence may be the presence of barium salt like that you have to write okay so that is how you have to show what is small quantity in a watch glass uh, and then uh, uh, the um, platinum wire should be different to hydrochloric acid and touch the using that hydrochloric acid and platinum wire to the sample and that should be shown to the flame very carefully okay that's how you have to do this experiment and uh, third test will be the uh, uh, iodine azide test so little amount of sample is treated with the iodine azide color of the solution changes from uh, you know uh, solution <clears throat> discharge which is slow effervescence there will be bubbles like thing will be coming out from this thing right so that means that may be the presence of sulfate salt here yeah. like that and uh, next test will be uh, the dilute sulfuric acid so you have to take the 10 mg of the sample okay this is slightly higher than but you can take here uh, because you have to see the uh, the evolution of the color here if you take very small quantity you will not able to see so these two experiment you have to take slightly uh, extra quantity here so i'll put into the test tube and 0.5 ml 0.5 ml you know it exactly measure 0.5 ml there will be a dropper if you take the four five drops of the dilute sulfuric acid it will be for uh, around 0.5 ml okay so you have to add that one and note down the reaction so if you see that evolution of colorless gas with much effervescence carbonate this is very very common salt uh, given to you even in the school days if you happen to do some experiment in school days right so light brown color nitrite and uh, evolution of color gas which is smell of rotten egg you know that very Uh, pungent or rotten egg smell, uh, uh, you know that will be sulfate smell. Okay, so H2O also will have same smell, right? And vinegar-like smell it will have acetic. So this all again indication of presence of some of the anion. In the previous case, uh, flame test indication of presence of some of the cations here, right? But uh, similarly in the color and uh, dry heating, you get it indication for presence of the some of the anion. are some of the cations right so these are only indications only okay but once this indication is confirmed later it will be confirmatory test i'll come back to this one little later and explain how this become a confirmatory test in later okay so same thing you have to take small quantity around 10 mg and uh, concentrated hcl uh, sorry sulfuric acid is added so when you add concentrated sulfuric acid you get a pungent smelling of gas with fumes Uh, in the air and gives you dense white fumes of ammonium chloride in contact with the glass or moisten with the ammonium hydroxide solution how this is done so there will be ammonium chloride solution will be um, sorry ammonium hydroxide solution will be kept somewhere you have to take a glass or dip that glass or glass or with the ammonium hydroxide solution that glass or should be shown to the gas you have to out from the test tube where you are doing the experiment so that will give you the uh, <clears throat> you know indication about the chloride ion similarly you, it has to shown to um, uh, you know pinch of uh, mno2 uh, in a test tube had a mno2 into the test tube you will see that you know um, uh, uh, brown fumes that indicates the presence of bromide Right. Similarly, the evolution of violet vapor straight away. If you add the sulfuric acid, there is a chance of iodide here. Okay. So, what is the reason for the color? That is the one already Sir has discussed to you, and you are supposed to read from your uh, the standard textbook. So, that is what going to be very part of your exam. This kind of question will be there in the exam. Okay. Well, so, uh, yeah. You. You have taken some mixture of salt at the beginning. You told, I think, right? Yes, yes, yes. To them. So the test also you should tell them accordingly, right? Which yeah. one is going to respond? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll yeah. tell that one because uh, the previous test I am telling that only indications, right? 
Yeah, okay, okay. Okay. So anyway, uh, uh, Saras uh, told that also. As I mentioned in the chat box, I am doing test with the lead chloride and the strontium nitrate. So what could have happened in the preliminary test? I have explained you the, all the preliminary test now, right? So you see that because it is having chloride and uh, lead strontium. So in the chloride, you don't have any changes happening because of chloride. Uh, in this thing so it may it have changed from yellow in hot condition so it because it is a lead there may be chances you may see yellow color formation there okay the dry heating right and uh, because it's a chloride and the nitrate you you may see that dark brown color fumes coming out from system uh, the glass very very small paint color you will be seeing that one because there is a the process of nitrate also so you may get some indication here okay uh, here again uh, these are all not going to show any indication there is no sublimation no x for formation nothing will be observed because there is no such anion cation present in the system in this our example so you see blue is white so you you, you will be definitely seeing this blue is white right so that blue flame will have fainted close to white that kind of color you will be seeing because we have lead in the system. Apart from that, strontium also there. So you will be seeing the permanent deep red color for the strontium. So what will happen? Because this is a mixture of two salts. You are supposed to see the white color because of lead. You are supposed to see the deep red color because of strontium. So this flame test is not going to give any perfect indication here because you will be seeing that mixture of these two colors, complementary color, you will be seeing that one. So that so that preliminary test is sometimes some things it, you may see the uh, uh, red, uh, red color and some things you may see the, uh, the bluish uh, white color for this thing. Okay, so that will be sometimes flame will be changing different colors when you rotate the uh, your um, glass art onto that one. Okay, so how this is going to be confirmed test? You have to go for proper separation of the cations later. But for anion, because of nitrate, you may, uh, uh, um, what is that? Nitrate, there is no uh, action here. Ah, here. Light brown fumes will be evolving slowly uh, if there is a sufficient quantity of salt present in the system. And similarly, chloride, you may get it pungent small gas because very very small quantity you may not see the gas uh, which is coming out from the flask as test tube and reaching your nose that is may not be possible because you will be taking very small quantity you will be getting very small quantity of chloride here so this may not give proper result in this case so now we will be going to the uh, wet test basically you will be making solution here so as uh, uh, last class uh, panda sir clearly explained to you you are going to make the solution. So first page of the instruction, I mentioned that you have to make a solution. So if it is soluble in water, you don't need to make the sodium carbonate. If it is not soluble in water, you have to do this process. Mixing with the uh, five, 5 gram of sample with around 10 times of the weight of the unnated sodium carbonate. Why we are doing, that's what I explained to you last time, that you know many salt may not go into solution in water alone. So in that case, what we need to test is that only anion. So we have to make sure that anions are going to solution. So when we do this reaction, so all this anion will be converted to sodium salt of the particular anion. Sodium salt of the particular anion will be mostly soluble in water. right? And the cation part will be forming, let us say you have copper chloride, copper chloride goes in solution. So copper sulfate, it may not go into solution. So what will happen? You will have be making sodium sulfate and uh, copper carbonate will be formed there. So that will settle down and sulfate goes into solution. So that's the idea of making sodium carbonate extract here. So the entire procedure, it is mentioned as if that we are doing experiment with the sodium carbonate extract. But I should have changed this thing. You have to make, understand in such a way that Either extract or clear solution. If it is soluble perfectly in water, you are taking that solution directly. 
If it is not soluble, you are making sodium ex carbonate extract, and then you will be taking sodium carbonate extract alone for this analysis here. Okay. So how to make this thing? Add, uh, you know, you will be taking some amount of sample, and 10 times of the sodium uh, carbonate you will be adding, and adding water to around 10 ml of water. Boil for 45 minutes. Boil for 45 minutes means you have to literally boil it to 45 minutes only. Okay, you cannot say many times students come back and say, sir, I have done 40 minutes, is it okay, sir? I have done 30 minutes, is it okay, sir? Sometimes people say, sir, I have done one hour, is there any problem? Okay, so these are all unnecessary questions. 45 minutes means that if you take a more something like this thing, you know, you don't need to accurately make 0.5 gram, but no, the, there will be bigger spatula will be given to you if you take one or two scoops of the spatula, it will be around uh, 0.5 gram. Okay, so that will be uh, a right quantity. So if you take too much quantity, you are supposed to add too much amount of sodium carbonate also. So if you are taking, let us say, two gram of sample and add only two gram of the sodium carbonate, you are not going to extract completely. That will be problematic. Right, so that also you have to be very careful here. And if you are having too much excess of sodium carbonate at all, it will be always answering for sodium carbonate. That is also problematic. Right, so you have to be very clear on that one. You make this thing for around 45 to maximum 60 minutes and then filter it. And that filtrate is called as a clear solution, supposed to be a clear solution that's called as a soda, soda extract or sodium carbonate extract. That's what you are going to use it if it is not soluble salt. Otherwise, you are just taking water solution. But remember that water solution means that we have to always use distilled water or deionized water. So in our laboratory, in our university, we have deionized water kept in the lab. So you are supposed to use that one. If you use tap water, tap water itself will have the magnesium, sodium, uh, uh, sodium and the calcium salts, of, salts in form of chloride or carbonate. So that itself will answer for your test. Okay, so misleading answer. So you are supposed to use the water only. So then you are going to first solution, you will be adding sodium carbonate, uh, few drops of sodium nitrofluoride solution. The reaction is mentioned here. So you will see the, you are not supposed to see the violet color here because we have not taken sulfide here. We are taking only chloride and nitrate. Okay, you will not see how we are going to write here to this what I extract, few drops of sodium nitroclusate was added. No change in color was observed. Because you are not going to see, see the violet color here, right? So no change in color was observed. And the maybe the absence of sulfide. Or you can say there is an absence of sulfide here. Okay. So the next test you are going to do that. Add five to five drops here. And the dilute HCl will be added. And effervescence are Cease once effervescence has ceased, uh, you know that effervescence will be coming that has to stop, right? Then you have to add three drops of dilute HCl here and uh, place in, in hot water rack for five minutes to expel CO2 completely and then have very chloride solution. So basically, because this is having the carbonate sometime, right? Because sodium carbonate solution we have prepared, so there may be a little bit of carbonate also present in this thing. So we have to remove the carbonate like as mentioned this procedure. So then finally you have to add two to three drops of barium chloride. So if you see the precipitate, you what is the precipitate? Barium sulfate is formed here, right? The sulfate we are going to analyze. So barium sulfate is supposed to be formed here. So that is not soluble in water. So that means that I would have given you barium, some sulfate to you, which is not soluble, right? So. That's what we are using same principle where sulfate will be precipitated here. So this will show that, you know, the uh, presence of sulfate if you are getting precipitate. For our example, today you are not going to get the precipitate here. So what you write that two drops of sodium extract, all these things you have to write in past tense as you have done that experiment and no white precipitate was obtained, absence of sulfate. And now moving to uh, the nitrate and nitrate here. Yeah. So to the, the uh, salt solution, acidify it with acetic acid and then add few drops of sulfonylic acid and alpha naphthalene 
naphthalamine solution. The reaction is mentioned here. You see the um, oxidation happen here, and after adding this thing, this organic compound is formed. This is red color dye. Dye formation happened here. So this reaction, you see that when these nitro compounds are there, this acid formation will happen. Uh, uh, happen here, right? So in the double bond formation happens only when nitrite is present in the system. Okay, once this is formed, that is further reacting with the amine, and this uh, dye is formed here. So this dye has a red color solution. So if there is no nitrite, this reaction will not happen. So you will not get a red dye here. So and in our example, you are not supposed to get this red color here. So what do you do? You take uh, you have write in such a way that it was acidified with acetic acid and few drops of sulfonylic acid and naphthalamine was added. No change in color was observed. Absence of nitrate. That's what you will be getting here. Now because this absence of nitrate, you are going to this test to the same solution, right? A solution of that acidic uh, carbonate extract. You will be adding zinc dust. Powder of zinc, right? It will be kept there. So stir the solution and using glass hand. So you will be seeing bright red coloration. So that is the showing. That is one showing the presence of nitrate. NO3 minus. This is NO2 minus. This is NO3 minus. Okay. So nitrate is present. Right. So reaction is mentioned here. <coughs> uh, so and if there is Nitrite is present in the first test. If you are seeing nitrite, you have to go to this test also. Okay, one of these things only, depending on what you are getting here. Okay, so you will be doing that one to add this thing HCl solution to soda extract, boil with urea and then centrifuge. Okay, acidify the centrifuge so with the acetic acid and then add few drops of sulfonylic acid and then after amine. So again, you will be seeing the bright red color same reaction will happen here you are reconfirming the nitrate formation sorry uh, nitrate sorry uh, reconfirming the nitrate here also some alignment problem here Okay, so uh, now there is a very famous test uh, which is known as a brown ring test for the nitrate uh, anion. So in this test, you are taking the around two to uh, ten to twenty milligram of sample directly, right, in a test tube and 0.5 ml of in a in 0.5 ml of water and cautiously add one ml of concentrated sulfuric acid, mix and cool under running water. So cautiously add me that sulfuric acid, concentrated sulfuric acid, right? You have to be cautious here. Incline the test tube and with the great care and allow the 0.5 ml of freshly prepared for a sulfate. So just before starting this thing, uh, this experiment, you have to take ferrosulfate, little bit of ferrosulfate in another test tube and, uh, uh, you know, make a pure solution of ferrosulfate and keep the two test tubes carefully. One is with the ferrosulfate. Another one is that your sample solution. So that means that you are taking sample, you are adding sulfuric acid so to the solid sample. Okay, sorry, not solid sample, a little bit of water, you will be adding sulfuric acid. And that solution is there. So you have to, I hope you can see uh, by hand, uh, you have to slowly touch the edges of the test tube and, and slowly add the uh, ferrosulfate solution to the test solution uh, in such a way that it goes along the walls of the tissue, not as a drop, right? It should not directly go and touch the uh, solution. It has to go along the walls of the tissue slowly and touches them. So when it touches, you can see, you will be seeing the two layers of the sample, two layers of the solution, right? Invisible solution, as if that you are adding water and oil together. And it will be separated out, same way it will be separated and that the surface, the bath is touching, interface area, you will be seeing beautiful brown drink. 
Okay, but remember that you should not shake it, and you have to make sure in such a way that you know it is going along the walls of the test tube only. Unless if you do carefully, you will not able to see the brown ring. Okay, so what is the reason for the brown ring? One of these things in this equation is the reason for the brown ring. I leave to you to identify from your test book. Okay. <clears throat> so this test is unreliable in presence of bromide, iodide, nitrate, and iodate. Sometimes the barium uh, and lead also interfere with this thing, right? So that means that you have to make sure that these compounds also present or absent in our system and come back again into the this test one more time to reconfirm the presence of nitrate here. Okay. So today's example. You are not having any chloride here. There is no, there is no interference here. So moving to the next test. So here we are saying that because you are having this sanction nitrate today's analysis, you are supposed to get the brown ring. You are not supposed to get the uh, any other uh, you know answer for this first uh, uh, the test number three. Okay. So brown ring is a confirmatory test for nitrate present here. So, sir, but uh, uh, and since the mixture of salts has lead and nitrate also, so wouldn't this uh, lead and barium, the sentence which says, uh, wouldn't the lead interfere in this part? Wouldn't we get PPT in that? Uh, since our uh, salts have both lead and also nitrate. Yeah, that's right. If it is a lead. Uh, uh, present in the system, it may interfere also. That case, you know, this, this system is not confirming. So you have another test also, right? Both the cases you are supposed to get the answer. Okay, both okay. the test, this thing nitrate here as well as brown thing, you are supposed to get the answer. If you are getting answer in one case, you have problem. Okay, so and let us say if if you have lead here. You may not get the brown ring properly, but you will get the answer here. How do you confirm that one? Because when you are going for cation analysis, you will be finding that there is a lead or barium present in this thing. So then again, you have to come back and reconfirm. You are you may not get the brown ring, but you may get answer. You are supposed to get the answer here only. Okay, that's how you have to confirm. Sir, or since the lead here is only reacting with the sulfuric acid, right? It is giving P uh, the precipitate. Can we add uh, excess of H2SO4 and remove the PPT and again go with the solution part? Because the only thing we need is with nitrate reacting with sulfuric acid and the lead is interfering by giving some PPT. So can yes. we remove that PPT and go for the test? Yes, you can filter out and remove that thing and after that you can take the filter, you can do that one. Okay, but you know, this, this may not really interfere in this case because you are going to make the sodium carbonate extract. So lead would have been already precipitated there, right? So uh, lead would have been already precipitated. You will be having only nitrate into the solution. So lead may not interfere in this case because lead chloride. Uh, I'm not sure whether lead chloride is soluble in water. Uh, if it is, I think it is not soluble because calcium nitrate is soluble. Lead chloride may not be soluble. So you will be doing that. Sodium carbonate extract. Sometimes uh, to avoid this thing, you can quickly do sodium carbonate extract a little bit and then do this reaction also one more time because lead will be already precipitated as a lead carbonate. Only uh, the chloride and nitrate will be present in solution here. So that way also you can reconfirm. Okay. Okay. So uh, next test is for chloride, right? They all highlight. Uh, will be coming one by one now. So, little bit of extract with the dilute uh, nitric acid and add two to three drops of ammonium nitrate solution, sorry, silver nitrate solution. You will be for uh, observing the formation of lead chloride, right? Lead chloride. So, this white precipitate, insoluble white precipitate will be uh, formed, insoluble in water, but that solution you will be seeing the white precipitate. To that, if you add a little bit of ammonium hydroxide solution, it will go into the solution again. That means you are taking the salt solution or sodium carbonate extract of the salt, 
where you have chloride you are adding silver nitrate to that one and then you are be observing silver chloride formation which is white precipitate which is also not soluble in water to that solution so that is one observation one part of the observation and continuing to that one you are adding the ammonium hydroxide solution to three drops of ammonium hydroxide solution to that one so that will go into the solution you see that two reactions are already mentioned here ammonium uh, silver nitrate react with the chloride silver chloride is formed right so how which is precipitating that all these things uh, common ion effect already you studied in last class also uh, uh, both of our uh, processes explained to you right so silver chloride is insoluble or sparingly soluble salt so in fact you will be doing quantitative analysis also using this reaction that will explain that time also okay so this silver chloride will react with the ammonium and this ammonium silver complex will be formed this complex is soluble here so first part of observation is soluble salt second part of the observation it goes in solution in the presence of ammonium hydroxide here yeah. so that is the confirmation excuse of, me sir yeah so when silver chloride is added to ammonium hydroxide will the same complex will form when it is reacting with ammonia yeah see actually is mentioned as the then white precipitate soluble ammonium hydroxide solution right so what happened ammonium hydroxide solution if you make into a solution in water you will have the equilibrium existing between the ammonium hydroxide and ammonia so ammonia even if you take ammonia gas and try to dissolve you will have the ammonium hydroxide formation in solution so that is the reaction of ammonia with water okay so you will be always having ammonia so ammonia will be reacting with the silver chloride which is formed because of this reaction so what is we are having in solution let us say you have made sodium carbonate extract so chloride will be present and nitrate will be present because of silver uh, strontium nitrate in our today's analysis yeah. okay so you are adding excess of silver nitrate so that silver nitrate will be reacting with the chloride present in the solution and that so chloride will be precipitating as a silver chloride so this silver chloride will be reacting with the ammonia which is coming from ammonium hydroxide solution which we are adding here okay so that is what the observation is confirming chloride formation okay so then there is a chromyl chloride test to further confirm the presence of uh, you know uh, uh, chloride in this system because chloride we have to confirm very uh, different way uh, as i mentioned that even small trace quantity of chloride present in water even when you are washing a test tube with the tap water and one or two a few drops of uh, water present in the test tube that will answer for chloride and unfortunately or fortunately whatever the reason our university has the law, uh, hard water university tap water law will be really hard so that means that there will be lot of carbonate and chloride present in the solution water itself tap water itself so it will, it will be answering so you have to be very careful and wash the test tube with the tap water and then finally wash with the deionized water repeatedly so remove every possible chance of having chlorine in the water then only this test will be answering properly so then we have to take the sample with three times of its weight and potassium dichromate is added to this thing in dry test tube remember that you are adding chromate salt in the uh, sample directly to the system okay sample <clears throat> slowly and carefully add concentrated sulfuric acid and uh, Keep gently, very slowly. That means keep gently. That means that don't show to the film straight away. With the continuously, slowly, slow, a uh, little bit from distance, you show it to that one. So red color vapor of chlorine, this compound will be uh, coming out. So that is the confirming the formation uh, presence of chlorine in the solution, right? So here you are taking sample straight away in the test tube in solid. condition and you will be you will be adding this potassium dichromate in solid uh, condition just try to mix it carefully and straight away show to show the test tube to the uh, flame right you will be seeing the vapor formation which is red vapor that is what 
chromyl chloride. This is called as a chromyl chloride here. Okay. So pass the evolved red vapors through dilute NaOH solution. So that solution became yellow solution. So how are we going to do this thing? Uh, I hope today Professor Panda will be presenting you one video. Okay. In that video, uh, I mean, uh, we could not record video because so many uh, COVID cases are arising in our campus. We are not, not able to uh, you know, go to campus and uh, do our experiment record ourselves. Luckily, we could find some useful experiment from uh, uh, websites, YouTube sites. And we'll give the link uh, after the uh, end of the class. You can watch it. So how we are going to do that one? You will be making um, dilute solution of any way. So you no need to make majority of solution be kept there. Whenever it is said that take a little bit of dilute solution, I'll just see majority of solution will be kept to you directly, um, readily in our laboratory. So you will be taking a little bit of uh, dilute solution of sodium hydroxide in one test tube. In another test tube, we are doing this experiment. You are observing the uh, formation of red vapor, right? So touch, try to touch both these test tube vein. I, I don't know whether you can see in the uh, camera. So two pens I'm showing, right? So touch like this thing as close as possible and try to keep a, you know, um, a tissue paper or a, a filter paper here and, and hold for some time slowly the vapor will go into other test tube, right? So slowly the vapor will go into other uh, test tube where you have sodium hydroxide solution. So when it touches, and you can see because a color vapor, red, red color vapor, you can visibly see that vapor is going to other test tube. Once it goes, take the test tube and hold with your uh, uh, in the finger, uh, of course with the filter paper, and uh, just shake it like this thing. And when you shake it, so that vapor goes into solution. That solution, sodium hydroxide is supposed, supposed to be colorless solution. So once this is touching and this going to the solution, you'll be seeing the uh, formation of yellow solution. That is the confirming correct results. Okay, very interesting reaction and very interesting chemistry happening here, right? So this, <coughs> see, chloride is reacting with chromate ion in presence of acidic condition and this chromyl chloride is formed and uh, this is a gas okay the chromium is a very heavy metal but still in this case it is a gas form compound here very rare uh, observation here right so what is the structure of this compound this is very interesting structure why it is gas again i i i don't want to tell that no i i i want to kindle your curiosity you go back to the book and find out that you can have a google search just two minutes you'll be able to get it sucks up from it for it this uh, cr o2 cl2 okay so you will be able to get it you go and see yourself then you will understand that interesting structure for this compound okay so that is about the chloride so because today we have lead chloride in our sample so you are supposed to get beautiful color formation in these three reaction. Uh, the beautiful chemistry happening, one sodium, uh, silver chloride formation, and uh, that is going to solution. And also it will be answering for chromate chloride test followed by <coughs> red, uh, yellow solution formation. All three will get nice, beautiful answer for this year. Okay, so and uh, coming to uh, going to next uh, reaction, so you will be taking soda oxide. But remember that because as I said that it is chloride is formed, a presence of chloride is confirmed, it doesn't mean that you have to stop this reaction, it doesn't mean that you are stopping the experiment at this moment. The reason is that because today I'm giving you. You are a student, I am a teacher, I am giving you only chloride, or I am giving you only chloride plus nitrate. So you will know that you will be getting chloride. You will know at least you, there is only one anion, or there is only two anions present in the solution. Right? So, but not necessarily always true, correct? So if, remember that you are working in the industry, some completely unknown condition, how are you going to confirm that there is only one anion is present, or two anions are present? No way, right? So that means that any experiment you have to go until the end of the experiment all the experiment that means that 
the absence of all other anions also confirm the presence of the particular anion i hope you got the point so let us see now you are going to the bromide test here so little bit of soda extract you are adding the dilute um, nitric acid and few drops of 2 to 3 drops of silver nitrate solution so reaction is mentioned silver bromide is formed like uh, silver chloride you are getting silver bromide is formed here that is also not soluble in water and that <clears throat> when you are adding the uh, you know um, um, ammonium nitrate solution you will be getting uh, going into the so yellow precipitate going into the solution i i i just expected one of you quickly ask ask this question the reaction is similar earlier also silver nitrate with the chloride this is silver nitrate with bromide you see the different both the cases ammonium uh, salt is formed here also ammonium salt is formed right uh, silver chloride with the ammonia and uh, here silver bromide with ammonia what is the different there you had a white precipitate which is go which was going into solution here you have yellow precipitate which is now going into solution in the process of ammonia one is small different but you can clearly observe that white precipitate and yellow precipitate but remember that you have to make the solution of the sample very clearly colorless solution if it is not soluble in water you have to make it very clearly so the mixed extract solution which is supposed to be colorless if solution itself have a color you will not able to get the proper answer here okay so but the experiments are uh, designed in such a way that you will get nicely answer here the red precipitate yellow precipitate you can see that you the solution may have a little bit color but precipitate will be different in color yellow precipitate or white precipitate how do you observe so you when you see the precipitate formation decan that solution part into another test tube and observe the precipitate alone to look for the color so then when you have the precipitate alone solid precipitate so now you can add ammonium hydroxide solution to that one and you see that is going into the solution so this is the confirmation of bromide here okay but today you are not going to get the bromide you will be getting only white precipitate you will not get the yellow precipitate here otherwise reactions are same here so this comes from that formation of or absence of bromide also confirm the presence of chloride here that means absence of yellow precipitate formation confirm the chloride ion right that's why i told you that any reaction you are just because you got the answer for chloride you are stopping here that's not allowed that's not correct okay you have to go systematic until the end so then third part uh, second part of this thing is that acid base little bit of soda extract with the hcl add the carbon tetrachloride and a few drops of chlor chlorine water and shake vigorously okay so this carbon tetrachloride is an organic solvent it will be kept in the laboratory and the chloride solution means that we will be making chloride solution chlorine gas be produced and that chlorine gas into water so you get a chlorine gas solution okay so that chlorine gas but remember that chlorine gas is dangerous okay is an anesthesia chlorine gas also anesthesia okay so if somebody happened to smell too much of chlorine continuously for 3 4 minutes they will be fainted so but remember that you know it to worry here the laboratory condition the quantity what you are using is a 2 to 3 mg only so if at all it coming you know it may not even come out from testing so that's why i told you in the safety lecture if it is mentioned that smell right i told you never smell the chemical that means that because you are to see the chlorine gas formation take the test tube straight away to the your nose and try to inhale it you may have headache or nothing beyond that because quantity is very small okay you may get headache also okay so that you have to be very careful not only our um, teaching lab any lab if you go you have to be very clear with the chlorine gas okay so but chlorine gas smell many of you would have already seen nowadays many places if you go there for disinfectant they are using right so all the sodium um, sorry the um, hypo solution or um, uh, what is that bleaching powder every 
where people are using to uh, disinfectant in the covid situation if you go to hospital or even pay big apartment home street everywhere you can see that one uh, bleaching powder is added or the hypo solution added where the chlorine gas is for coming out which is oxidizing agent that oxidizing agent is the one which is reacting with the um, our coronavirus and the deactivate the spike proteins of the coronavirus that's the idea okay so chlorine is also very powerful oxidizing agent so you can easily identify the chlorine smell in you play so moving from the chlorine uh, bromine and then uh, you know to iodide now okay so here we are taking the sodium extract uh, soda extract here and adding the ammonium uh, sorry um, nitric acid here dilute nitric acid and then few drops of uh, two to three drops of ammonium nitrate same key thing and you are seeing that um yellow precipitate but see different between this and this this yellow precipitate goes into the solution of ammonium hydroxide but here also you are getting yellow precipitate but this is not going to the solution when you are adding ammonium hydroxide here that means silver iodide is not reacting with the ammonia to form this kind of complex and that is because you know that is the Because it's not forming, this silver iodide will be remaining as a silver iodide, and that silver iodide is red color, which is not going into solution. Okay, so that is the important difference between these two uh, reactions here. Uh, both the cases you are getting yellow precipitate, but one yellow precipitate goes into the ammonium hydroxide solution, another yellow precipitate is not going to ammonium hydroxide solution. So to further confirm the iodide presence. so today you are not going to get the yellow precipitate so uh, whether it is soluble or not soluble doesn't matter for today sample because we are not going to get yellow precipitate at all okay so then you may skip this reaction for today's condition because we are having only chloride here but assuming that you may have the iodide you have to try this thing also so to extract with the hcl and add um, one ml of uh, uh, carbon tetrachloride and chloride gas same thing here also then you are seeing the violet color of <coughs> coloration of ccl4 layer here you see that red reddish brown coloration of ccl4 layer here violet coloration of ccl4 layer so what is that happening you are having the wa water solution correct you are having the water solution of the sample here because you are adding the um, soda extract with the dilute hcl means you are adding water right so you are adding carbon tetrachloride so organic compound organic compound is not soluble in water you will be seeing two different layer separating for you have done probably in your uh, school days also you will be having two different layer so which layer will be bottom i don't remember because carbon tetrachloride density probably less than one so it will be in top only so when it is goes in top so you know the carbon tetrachloride layer in top so that means that that carbon tetrachloride layer you may see reddish brown color so that is the bromate formation here you may see violet color that is iodide formation the reactions are very clear we mentioned here right bromate with chlorine bromine gas is formed here right so here how this happening what is getting reduced what is getting oxidized here chlorine is getting oxidized right or reduced i told you chlorine is a oxidizing agent so that means it is getting reduced chlorine become chloride so getting reduced here right so that is what happening here chlorine getting reduced and the bromine getting oxidized and the bromide is forming bromine gas is forming here here iodine uh, iodine is solid in room temperature but it will go into the solution so the violet color formation happens here okay so that is how we are going to distinguish between the bromine and iodine so i hope you very clear about this all three uh, halogens here chlorine bromine iodine okay so we are we will not give fluoride in many cases the reason is that many times fluoride ion will be corrosing corrosive and it will be dangerous to handle in the undergraduate laboratory so we will not give uh, uh, fluoride yes yeah. so uh, moving to iodide so this is iodide this is iodide 
Okay, so this is a little bit of uh, sodium extract with the dilute acetic acid and then shake with the ammonium thiocyanate solution and few drops of carbon tetrachloride again. Reaction is mentioned here. You will see that <coughs> the uh, CCL4 layer become pink solution. Right? Pink solution. So this iodine, again the pink is because of the formation of iodine only. Okay? Iodine only, but here violet and pink more or less close shades only. But depending on the concentration here, you will have the different color formation here. Otherwise, both the cases, you know, the reason is that um, the iodine formation and how the iodine is interacting with the carbon tetrachloride. That is the reason for the color here. This charge transfer uh, complex kind of thing. So that color will be formed and there will be small difference in this color. But you see the sequence of reaction. You are adding ammonium thiocyanate here. But here you are adding dilute HCl. So that itself completely two different reactions. You can confirm the iodide formation here. And uh, <coughs> bromate now. Um, Uh, here, what we are doing that you are taking the sodium carbonate extract and sulfuric acid and uh, manganese sulfate solution will be adding. Heat the solution for two to three minutes, boil in with the water bath. Okay, you have to really heat to boil using water bath only, not directly to the Bunsen burner. And after that, cool it slowly. Keep it after boiling, you have to keep it for five, ten minutes. It will be getting cool. And a few drops of benzidine reagent and few small crystals of sodium acetate will be added. So you will see that this is the reaction happening, manganese reacting with the bromate and uh, forming that, uh, uh, reacting with the bromate and forming a bromate uh, anion. So the bromate only relates the bromate anion. So that is the blue color solution will be seen. So that is it from, from the formation of this is called benzidine blue. Okay, that so confirm the formation of our uh, it's a presence of the bromate ion in the solution. Okay, so moving to uh, acetate, uh, this is the one you can really feel the color. It's like a you know fully ripe banana kind of uh, sm um, smell. You may feel it clearly and. Uh, uh, here you will be adding sulfuric acid and a few drops of methyl acetate and whole mixture warm to 2 to 3 minutes. Right? Then pour the mixture in a beaker containing water and shake properly. You know, you just shake it with the water. You can take the glass rod and stir also. You see the reaction is already mentioned here. There is a formation of ester here. Okay, diethyl acetate is formed here. The esters have a nice smell. You know that in organic chemistry, right? Many of the esters are uh, nice, smelly compound. You may like that smell also, right? It's, uh, uh, even scent, all these things have some amount of esters. The fruits also release some amount of extra, different kinds of ester. And this is where you are getting the ethyl acetate. Ethyl um, acetate. So that gives the... Uh, this this uh, ester is giving the nice smell. Uh, that confirm the presence of acetate ion in the reaction. So what is happening here? You know, sodium acetate and sulfuric acid, acetic acid form, that acetic acid reacting with the ethyl alcohol, uh, acid plus alcohol simple reaction, full organic chemistry reaction. So that comes from the formation of this thing. How you have sodium acetate? You are taking soda extract. Whatever the acetate, even it was lead acetate given to you, right? So the lead acetate, you know, because for the extract we are doing, lead acetate is not soluble. So you have to do uh, the soda extract. So sodium acetate only present in solution. So we don't bother at present whether lead is present or sodium is present. We are worrying about only acid radical, anion present in the solution. So that is what we are doing. Acetate is sodium acetate. So this acetic acid form, acetic acid reacting with our uh, ethyl acetate from the ester gives a nice smell. Okay. This is the last test for this um, level. Uh, no, this is for phosphate. So here you leave this a sample with 
concentrated uh, uh, nitric acid cool centrifuge heat is centrifuge that means that you are centrifuging and solids are settling at bottom you are decanting only that liquid part you are taking okay centrifugate means liquid part okay so that's what we are going to take it with the excess ammonium molybdate solution okay? reaction is mentioned here and uh, uh, producing such a sulfide affect the reaction and should be destroyed before carrying out test okay i think i did not add that thing how you destroy this thing i'll i'll maybe next class i'll tell you that how you are going to destroy if it is sulfide it may interfere that one so uh, but assuming that no today example we don't have sulfide and you are not going to get the answer for this uh, test today uh, we don't have phosphate in our sample but uh, if you have phosphate you have this phosphate uh, from uh, this compound formed in the reaction that is the yellow color solution okay that yellow color solution the um, yellow color precipitate right and that yellow color precipitate will go into solution uh, in ammonia solution that means ammonium hydroxide solution same like what we did in halogen so it goes into solution it is in uh, you know yellow precipitate formation in this reaction and that is going into solution and forms the formation of uh, presence of the phosphate anion in our reaction in our sample right so Today's example: lead chloride and stannous nitrate. So you will not get answer here. You will not get answer here. You will not get answer here. You will be getting only answer for all these three chlorine tests, chloride test, and these two nitrate tests. Okay. All other tests you will be, you will not get any answer. So what you are going to write is that no reddish brown formation is observed. You have to write this thing: acidified little soda extract. Don't write that no acidified. Little bit so little of soda extract was acidified. Or I have acidified soda extract. So you have to write acid, but you have done the experiment. I am giving you instruction. So I am telling you acidified, but you have to write that I have done the experiment. So that's how we have to change the uh, language here. Okay. Any uh, question from this side so far? Okay, assuming that you got the idea about the anion thing, and we'll go to cation. Pandya sir, yeah, tell me. Yeah, so anything you want to add to uh, acids, we'll go to cations now. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Okay. So now we have analyzed the anion. We confirmed the lead and uh, sorry uh, chloride and nitrate present in the solution. Okay. So what is that we are supposed to do now is that uh, what is the cation present in the solution? So we are we know for example today we are having lead and strontium. So before going into this thing. First thing, what we have to do is that we have to make a original solution. This is called original solution. Basically, you are making solution of the sample given to you. So, dissolve 200 to 300 milligram of the sample given to you, right? So that means the biggest spatula. You will be given two, three different sizes of the spatula. You take the biggest possible spatula given to you and dissolve the salt into uh, uh, water, right? So that means that I mean, sorry, don't go straight away putting all these things into water. You take little bit of, uh, as usual, two to three milligram of the sample and try to see whether it goes into water. That means that it should be like you know, you can test your home itself. You take the sodium chloride and uh, add in water and you shake it and you will see the clear solution. Just once it goes into solution, you don't see that actually you have added sodium chloride into that one. That's a clear solution, right? In just in home, just now we can test it. Uh, just after your lecture, we can test it, right? So that kind of clear solution you have to get it. If you are not getting clear solution, then take another spatula of sample in another test tube and add dilute HCl and see few drops of dilute HCl and see whether. It goes into the HCl solution, forms a clear solution. 
and if it is fine, leave it. If it is not going, go to consolidation. Like that, you have to go one by one slowly up till aquaregia. Right? Aquaregia is three volume of concentrated fuel and one volume of concentrated nitric acid. Right? You have to be very, very careful while you are handling the aquaregia. Highly corrosive acid. This one. Okay. So that means um, the any sample will be soluble in any of this condition. Right? Let us say you are getting water solution. You don't need to do anything like this. Here. If it is not soluble in water, it's not soluble in any HCl, it goes to only a, a pure dilute nitric acid. So you have to take the solution of nitric acid. Now you go to this thing. Okay. So that means that you are testing with a small quantity of sample. Once you confirm it goes only with pure dilute nitric acid, something like that, and take that as a solution and dissolve, make a large quantity of solution. Okay, so large quantity of solution. <clears throat> so, so that's what I have already explained. So this solution is called where it is soluble. That's called as an original solution. So, uh, so you see that if, if the original solution has been prepared in concentrated HCl, excess must be operated off, and the solution should be considerably diluted before proceeding for further analysis. That means the operated off means that. Just show to the uh, uh, Bunsen burner flame, so chlorine gas will be evolving out from this thing. Where it goes into solution, means that some reactions happen there, right? A little bit of chlorine will be, HCl will be remaining, HCl is gas as such, but it's a hydrochloric acid, means what? It's a solid uh, gas in the uh, liquid solution. Okay, so once you operate, the gas will be going out from this thing. So if it is considered a nitric acid, aqua idea has been a solution. The solution will be operated to dryness, dissolve in concentrated HCl, and then dilute with water. If it is formed with this thing, with the nitric acid or aqua regia, so slow, heat is slowly, uh, but in Bunsen burner, with the, uh, the compound in test tube, you operate out the, all the solution from the one, so you get to dry some compound. After that, you add HCl solution, HCl, concentrated HCl, and then water uh, slowly and you will be getting clear solution. So now you know how to prepare the solution. You, are, you have taken the solution now, and after that you are going for separation of cation to group. That's what Baskasa explained to you uh, uh, two weeks back. Right? So to the clear solution, add a few drops of dilute HCl. Remember that if you have made solution using by any of this procedure with using HCl, so you no need to do Again, adding the little bit of dilute HCl. There is no meaning here. Already it is in HCl solution. All right. So, you see, because already it is in HCl solution, you don't need to add this thing. So, uh, assuming that today lead chloride and sanction nitrate is in water solution, so you have to add HCl, dilute HCl. And uh, further two three drops of ensure complete precipitation. How you ensure complete precipitation? You are adding a few drops of HCl. Assuming today you are getting water solution, so you will see the precipitate formation. Then you add another two, three drops, shake it properly. You will see that all precipitate is formed. Still, you add one more drop of HCl. And see that when you are the drop is touching that solution, you can see the formation of the precipitate. You can see the formation of compound, right? But if it is not happening, that precipitation is complete. So that is why you have to stop that adding extra amount of. Um, so, hydrochloric acid to solution. Right? So, what you are going to get today definitely will be getting precipitate here because you have already lead in the solution. Right? So, so you will be getting precipitate, you are getting white precipitate. So, this may be, you know, because you are today I told you you have lead. So, if you don't know, you have to assume that you may have lead or chloride. Sorry, lead or silver. Uh, present in the solution. Chloride we have already confirmed that is different. So this is analysis for cation partner. Okay. So cations you have lead or silver in the solution. So how we are going to proceed? So you have to collect this residue, keep separately. That means that you are going to do centrifugation. 
and uh, you decant know, that one certification means that you know you know how to do certification otherwise you will be explained how do you do so certification means that you no know, when you protest solid part goes on settle at the bottom of the test tube and uh, uh, you have clean solution at the top so clean solution should be decanted to another test tube and solid part should be kept as such so now you have recipe number 1 we keep it separately with the name of recipe number 1 take that filter or clear solution if you are not getting uh, here you that is called clear solution if you get the precipitate you are centrifuging centrifuging it so that is called centrifugate so basically same solution only right so same solution you are continuing so i'll repeat it you are having water solution you are having hcl you got the precipitate precipitate is separated out as a centrif uh, by centrifugation process so that's called centrifugate if you are not getting precipitate it's still called as a clear solution same clear solution complete so that solution only you have to take it so that solution this is called as a, this is group 1 cation so other day bhaskar sir told you group 1 group 2 group 3 something like that sometime some book refer as a group 2a group 2b because this salt chloride salt yeah that's what he was telling right so chloride salts only uh, called as a group a salts okay so this is also chloride salt so all these things are <clears throat> so, uh, uh, group 1 so when it is coming into sulfide in acidic condition the sir told you sulfide in acidic condition right so this is all sulfide in acidic condition within that you have group 2a 2b same way hydroxide and uh, here we call it as uh, a group 3a and 3b and 4 5 okay sometime some book refer this as a group 3 this as a 4 this as a 5 this as a 6 also okay so doesn't matter but remember this table how you are following that one okay so uh, so you got one precipitate you have clear solution you take the clear solution add few drops of uh, hcl add four drops of um, hydrogen peroxide solution heat it on water bath for 2 to 3 minutes then only we are passing that uh, hydrogen sulfide gas right so uh, once you pass the hydrogen sulfide gas so you will see the precipitate formation if you have any of this salt lead copper and cadmium remember that lead should have been precipitated completely here but if you have not done that reaction properly you may still have the lead precipitation here that may lead to confusion make sure that's why i told you clearly here that make sure that you know further adding hcl all precipitation is complete if you left out some that it will be again precipitating here okay so assuming that you have done that experiment so you will get precipitate here uh, if you have copper cadmium or tin okay so today we are not going to get the precipitate but if you get the precipitate you have to take that residue and centrifuge it separately as i told you here the residue one you are naming and keeping separately so now we are talking about residue two if you get precipitate here so in the residue two and there also you get clear solution but same solution continuing from here to here okay so this is continuing for this direction but taking the residue two you will be adding ammonium nitrate solution and the ammonium hydroxide solution to see other the uh, black formation black residue or yellow residue this itself flew that you know lead copper or yellow means cadmium here here centrifugate you if you get precipitate you do this thing if you are not getting or even if you get it also the centrifuge you have to do this test and confirm the formation uh, presence or absence of tin in the solution okay so that's one direction another direction main direction we are continuing here you will be adding uh, boiling of the h2s so that means that the same solution what we are getting here so this solution you are boiling uh, by showing to the uh, um, bunsen burner h2 gas will be completely removed from the solution to that condition we are adding ammonium chloride and ammonium hydroxide so basically you are turning this entire reaction mixture from acidic condition to basic condition okay when you are turning to basic condition if some hydroxide chromium or iron is present so uh, this hydroxide salt will precipitate out so if 
if you get precipitate green color you get a chromium if you get precipitate a brown color you 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 mean that there is a iron present in the solution if you are not getting you don't have uh, to worry about these two uh, you know if you get residue you rain this residue as a residue fry and keep it separately okay so now uh, because you know in the acidic condition turn to basic condition you are passing h2s one more time you are adding few more drop because you are getting precipitated here right so completing the precipitate you are adding few more drops and centrifugate it and set, take the pure solution if you are not getting precipitate the same solution continues here okay so if, if you get precipitate you are centrifuging and separating it here so this clear solution once again you are passing it to us in the basic condition now so in this basic condition you may get precipitate like black nickel white zinc pink manganese right these three so now you are getting to let's see number six here right so this is about the separation of this thing and if you are getting to separate it keep it separately and if you are getting or doesn't get also this clear solution will be continued remember that you are taking from the same solution going towards the right bottom okay so you are here now to so uh, <clears throat> today we had the precipitate in the first case and uh, you don't have any other precipitate from in this is to 3 is to 4 is to 5 is to 6 we don't have any precipitate okay so now we are coming to this condition okay take this thing and uh, remove the hts by boil that means that we are taking solution showing to the flame and once you show to the flame the it is boiling so when it is boiling dissolved gas will come out and the hts is gas dissolved gas will come out so uh, that to that solution we are adding ammonium carbonate solution and ammonium hydroxide here so it, it is forming barium carbonate Calcium carbonate, calcium carbonate. All will be white solid here. White solid only. Okay, all will be white solid here. Today, because we have calcium solid in this solution, you will get precipitate here. I think this is supposed to be residue number. Uh, this is one, two. Okay, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. This is supposed to be residue number seven. Residue number seven. i am not telling about group okay this is group separate group name is different i am just telling about residue number only okay residue number 7 so you will have residue number 1 today uh, because of lead and you will have residue number 7 also because of strontium right so uh, if you get this thing you separate it and keep it separately even if you get or doesn't get also you are going to do this analysis separately you have till clear, clear clear solution you have sodium potassium or ammonium salt here oh i hope you got the point so you are going systematically from the top to bottom and without worrying whether you have got the first precipitate or you are not getting first precipitate you have to completely go until the end okay until the end from starting to beginning basically you will be taking one test tube That test tube will be continuing basically, right? So one uh, 50 ml or 20 ml test tube will be will be taking. You start with the one ml of the sample here. They said that about one ml, right? So about one ml. So you'll be adding slowly, little bit, little bit, little bit, and test tube may be filled now. But every time you'll be separating, and same solution will be continuing. It's not that you take every time one new solution and do this thing. So you have to take. from here you get the precipitate take the precipitate separately and that solution you are taking again you get precipitate you separate the precipitate again same solution you are taking like that so now i have two solid precipitate residue 1 and residue 7 residue 1 mean that it may be lead and silver and residue 7 it may be barium or strontium or calcium all are present here so you have procedure for how to do the residue one you are today we will be getting precipitate in right so to that precipitate two minutes and still continuously centrifuge rapidly basically you are adding water uh, wash with water separate the solution from residue and dropper with a dropper and transfer clear solution to to a 
centrifuge tube, right? So this residue, right? In this thing, you are adding water. Place the tube in your water bath for two two minutes continuously, and basically what you are doing, you are adding water, heating it, right? So you still have two different uh, <clears throat> solution. Some let start will go into the solution here. Because you have removed of all the chloride, right? So that lead chloride will be precipitated. Oh, sorry, all the HCl from the system. So lead chloride now will go into solution. So you have two separate, clear separation. If you have silver, you get this thing. You get residue. If you don't have silver, you will not get this thing. You will be adding a few drops of ammonium acid solution and one drop of potassium, like uh, potassium chromate here, and you get a yellow precipitate. Okay. So that yellow precipitate comes from the lead chromate, uh, lead presence. Okay, so yes, today we have only lead, you will not get the precipitate here, it, you, you will be adding a lot of water. So when you stir with the hot condition, it will go continuously into clearly into solution. That precipitate, you are taking it and uh, doing with this test and confirming lead dust. Test. Okay, similarly, you take the residue. Uh, um, one. Oh, that is a okay. Residue two is not there, right? Residue two will be you will be separating again. Residue three and residue four you will be getting. So residue three you take it and continue to do this thing. I think I know it to uh, yeah. Uh, you said that. Let uh, can you slightly scroll up once residue one. Residue one. Say yes, sir. Uh, uh, you you showed that yellow PPT is uh, lead chromate, right? Okay. Uh, can we do it like this? Uh, since in the chromyl chloride, now the salt which you gave was lead chloride, right? Mm -hmm. uh, right. So in the chromyl chloride test for the last one, you said yellow solution will be chromate. Uh, since the chromate is present in the solution, we'll get a yellow solution. Yes. Can we add salt, our salt to that? And if we get PPT, can we confirm that we also have lead in our salt? Would that be a confirmation? No, no, that is not a confirmatory test for lead. Because that is completely different solution. You are taking the anions into the solution. There you don't have chloride. Uh, sorry, you don't have cations. Only cation is uh, sodium. That one, sodium carbonate extract, right? So the when you have that one, uh, if it is lead chloride, it would have been in solution, right? Already lead chloride is in the solution. So that you will be doing only test for chloride there. So this will not go back again and confirm that. That was yeah. for, see, for Murali, I'll I'll just chip in here. Oh, yeah. uh, see, uh, you it is better you analyze anions separately and mm -hmm. cations separately. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, first is you would not know what you are given. So how would you add lead there? That is one thing. See, what you are essentially going to do is you're going to try and identify what is given to you. And this whole metal separation analysis that Murali said. Uh, would clearly you know would sort of you know help you in identifying which class of metal ions uh, like is given to you based on its solubility in different reagents. Okay, so don't confuse this and that. Like here now, after you find out how can you go back there and add lead? Because you no, know, you don't know first what that is. Uh, so just you no know, uh, separate the tests. The the tests given for anions are uh, you no. Know, you just Try to follow whatever is said there based on its solubility, either the sodium carbonate based solution or the simple solution. And this one separately. Do not link both the copper. See, and earlier, one of your questions of interfering radicals that is there. Uh, there are few anions and cations which always interfere uh, when you try to identify the other ions. So, uh, standard interfering uh, radicals are known. So what we generally do is when we give you mixed uh, salts, we make sure that there are no interfering anions present in that mixture. So you will never have any problems of an inf interfering anion or cation in any of these analysis. Okay. Okay, Murli. Yeah, thanks, Bhaskar. Yeah, I, I hope uh, all of you got that Meaning that no anion reaction and cation reaction, this procedure you have to completely do separately. Don't ever try to mix these two to that one. Okay, that's a clear point here. Okay, 
see and that in the rescue um, we are going to rescue three right so the rescue three may have laid if you miss there in that way that place okay or uh, copper and cadmium uh, here you are be adding sulfuric acid and alcohol one alcohol will be kept there uh, mostly ethanol so if a white precipitate appears add uh, alcohol and sulfuric acid to hold you know basically you are testing small quantities right so <clears throat> uh, and that precipitate only you are taking right so that one uh, boil till white fumes appear cool and drop add a drop of water and centrifuge so still you are getting precipitate here means after adding sulfuric acid and alcohol still you are getting precipitate you get the lead and again you are continuing same lead the, the same procedure like here okay to confirm this lead so uh, if you have done clear separation in the first group you will not have this problem so you will be straight away going to this one but always better to confirm one more time by adding little bit of dilute sulfuric acid and alcohol to see whether this is happening precipitate is happening or not or else you will be getting clear solution here so that clear solution if the, that itself in blue in color so that shows that copper is present copper 2 plus right so to this thing add ammonia solution drop a still solution is alkali you know how do you check the alkalinity you will be having uh, ph paper kept in the laboratory so you will be taking a small piece of ph paper and take one drop using dropper and add that to uh, filter paper and see the color changes to uh, alkaline side and that is confirming solution turning to alkaline okay so that solution you will be dividing into two so you have test tube full of uh, something you take two so you just divide them all more or less equal it's not exactly two so to one solution you add two drops three drops of acetic acid and uh, two drops of this um, uh, uh, cyanide and you will see the brown precipitate formation here okay here are here uh, you will be again passing next two years and form that yellow golden yellow precipitate normally so you will see the cadmium sulfate formation that is the confirming cadmium so basically you are separating two so this sulfate into solution where is that this residue three what we got it from there right that residue three you are dissolving in the sulfuric acid and alcohol right so that one if the solution do that indicates the chlor copper but to confirm that one you are separating to this into two and one portion you do test for the copper another portion you do test for the cadmium here so now you see that you are confirming cadmium so you take the little bit of uh, uh, this thing uh, solution uh, put into glass vat and show to go to the flame test and try the test for cadmium so that if you get clear color for that one that is the really confirm the formation as a presence of cadmium in the solution right so what i told you the um, uh, confirm a uh, preliminary test right flame test cadmium blue is yellow color here see blue is yellow color is for lead as well as cadmium so but here you take this solution in test you in a um, glass vat and that drop you show to the flame you see that color so that is cadmium blue is color but if you take this solution or this precipitate touching with the glass vat and show to the flame you will see blue is color that is confirming lead so same test you now become confirmatory test also that's how you have to use the flame test after separating everything properly using this group separation procedure okay and uh, now you are going to residue number 3 after that residue number 5 you are having the residue number 4 directly confirm the presence of tin here because you are already confirming that only tin is available in this case so this confirm here so residue, residue number 5 goes for chromium and or iron okay so you are adding the ammonia liquid ammonia and um, rejecting the washing reject the washing means that basically uh, you know you are adding dilute ammonia solution and that solution liquid part will be thrown out 
okay only precipitate you are taking so that is having ferric hydroxide and copper chromium hydroxide here so so i am repeating it so residue you are taking basically you are washing the residue with the dilute ammonia solution and throw that liquid part so only take the precipitate again right so that precipitate you are adding the uh, hydrogen peroxide and sodium hydroxide boiling it for one minute in water bath and centrifuge it so in this process if you get brown precipitate that is the one take that brown precipitate and do this test and confirm as iron yeah if you are not getting residue you are taking that solution you are adding that the, it is in yellow color and uh, chromium is definitely present here so this solution right this solution if it is yellow color chromium is definitely present there Acidified dilute acidic acid and lead acidic solution. So you are getting yellow precipitate here. Okay, that confirms the chromium. Uh, presence of the chromium here. Right? I repeat, you are taking that residue file, adding with washing with the ammonium hydroxide solution or ammonium solution, and add the ammonium, uh, uh, sorry, hydrogen peroxide and sodium hydroxide and boil it. So when you are boiling, if you get the precipitate, and the precipitate is in brown color, if you you may get different color precipitate. If you get different color precipitate, don't worry. You have to get the brown precipitate. You may get different color precipitate because of the some impurity present in the sample given, or you did not do proper separation, or you have used the uh, you know uh, uh, DA not used the DNA water. So these are all some reasons. But if you get precipitate, the precipitate is supposed to be brown color. Okay, so that brown color confirms the formation of iron with this, uh, this reaction. If that centrifugal, if it is yellow color, it definitely it has the chromium. Uh, that chromium can be further confirmed forming precipitate here. Okay, so now we are going to residue number six here. That means residue number six having nickel, zinc, manganese. <clears throat> so this is again. Long procedure here. So um, these are the um, if not black, if not black, these are not present. That itself gives some indication. Still, the precipitate in cold with the uh, cold means you can just cool it with the uh, uh, tap water in cool condition. But in summer, it doesn't make any sense. Okay. So with dilute HCl and um, two three milliliters, then centrifuge it, right? In that case, if you get a precipitate, black precipitate, you have the nickel and cobalt here. So you have to proceed to, to this step. If adding with this dilute HCl, if you don't get precipitate, you are not going to do this thing. You will be doing this thing only. Okay. So, uh, but today, example, you don't have the uh, uh, residue for six. But in case if you have residue six, you are here in that precipitate. You you have to see black residue. In that black residue, you have to continue this test and and see that you know <clears throat> divide into two parts. And one part you are testing for the nickel by adding dimethyl glyoxin solution, beautiful red, sorry, blue. Um, sorry, uh, red, sorry, I'm confusing here. The beautiful red precipitate will be formed with dimethyl glyoxin. So this dimethyl glyoxin uh, precipitation of nickel is your quantitative analysis to uh, estimate the amount of nickel present in this thing. Okay, you will be dimethyl uh, glyoxide uh, is not quantitative. It's a, uh, it's a quantitative analysis, but by gravimetric method, not by titration. Okay, so you will be doing this experiment uh, when you are coming to quantitative analysis lab also, either in a undergraduate or at least in a machine lab. So that will be wonderful uh, reaction to do that one but here this is confirmatory test for the presence of nickel but same reaction will be used to estimate the amount of nickel present so qualitative analysis says that what is present quantitative analysis will be saying that how much it is present right but the reaction will be same to you for the purpose but here red precipitate confirm the formation of nickel and another person will be the nitro percent so this brown, red brown precipitate uh, confirm the cobalt present in this thing. So this one part. So here you are getting residue. If you get residue, you are doing. If you get also, you can do centrifuges. You separate the residue and do this part. 
and certificate you will be doing that part. If you are not getting the certificate, you are straight away from here to here you are coming. So you contain zinc and magnesium, right? So and uh, he, because we have started this crystal came because of passing of H2S in the basic condition, right? So here <clears throat> boil of the H2S as well as you know if it are excess H2S present because H2S gas, right? It will be dissolved. Some amount of dissolved H2S will be there. You will be you have to expel that one by boiling, okay? And add a sorry sodium hydroxide solution uh, and three drops of hydrogen peroxide solution, boil and centrifuge. In this case, if you get dark color precipitate, you are going to do this for magnesium. If you are not getting uh, any precipitate, so acidified with the dilute acidic acid and again pass to your H2 here, you get a white precipitate which comes from the zinc here. Okay. And similarly, here if you get residue, you continue this thing by adding ammonium uh, nitric acid, sorry, not ammonium, the dilute nitric acid and the hydrogen peroxide. And finally, sodium bismuthate. Right? So this NaBO3 you are adding, and here you get a purple color formation, which is confirming magnesium. So uh, once again, you, you can take a little bit of residue, this residue straight away go to the flame test. And what is the flame test for manganese? Is there anything? No, sorry, we don't have a flame test uh, special indication for manganese here. Yeah. Okay, uh, there is no uh, test for manganese in flame. So, uh, zinc formation, you can confirm, manganese formation, you, you can confirm. From residue five, residue six. Residue six has the four different cations, right? All these four different cations, we are confirming systematic analysis by this thing. You cannot take the first salt, first salt, and do this thing. Only from residue six, you have to do the entire test. Doesn't mean that you can take the first salt and don't do this thing. Okay, that will not give proper answer. So finally, you are going to residue seven which is having the, um, what is that, calcium, barium, calcium, right? This was residue 7. For our today's salt, we have strontium. So we have to carefully do this analysis today. That, um, yeah, treat the residue 7 with the dilute acetic acid and stir. Place in hot water bath until the precipitate has dissolved. So completely it has to go to solution. Okay. And they add two to three to four drops of hot solution, hot solution of the hot solution for barium by adding drop of uh, two. Okay, so it's, a, uh, it's not written properly. So basically you are adding uh, barium. Okay, it's barium may present in this thing, right? By adding few drops of uh, 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 potassium dichromate solution, uh, potassium chromate solution. Here you see that yellow precipitate it forms the barium chromate that indicates the precipitate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think test two, two uh, three drops of solution for barium by adding, you are testing barium by adding two drops of this chromate, okay, potassium chromate. So you will see. You see that if you you are adding acetic acid and to that acetic acid solution, you are adding, you know, uh, uh, this is potassium chromate. You see, if you see uh, uh, yellow precipitate, it is barium. If barium is present, then the remaining our solution add excess of the dichromate. So we are taking only few drops here, right? But you have so much quantity of this thing. So if barium is present you have to add excess of the potassium chromate to precipitate out all barium. Okay, so you are taking only few drops, confirming the presence or absence of barium. If it is barium present, if barium is present, then you add excess of the chromate and precipitate out all the barium as a barium chromate. And if barium is absent, and you will be directly going to the um, <clears throat> you know, test for the calcium and the strontium. So this is what the solution is. Solution A is the first solution what you are preparing. So in that first solution, that means that acetic acid and um, 
and basically you are adding acetic acid to that one right so it is the seven so that solution a from that solution a you are testing for chromium uh, barium by adding chromate and if barium is present you are precipitating out completely if barium is, that is confirm the barium right so if barium is absent it is for calcium or strontium right so this thing to that solution you add this ammonium sulfate solution followed by the ammonium hydroxide droplets until mixture turn alkaline so mixture turn alkaline i already I told you how you are going to check it so generally you add few drops and then test with the uh, ph paper so warm it for one minute in water bath and centrifuge so here if you get precipitate it is having white due to strontium sulfate right so this is strontium sulfate washed with water dissolve portion of it yeast or lima facial and uh, Apply flame test, right? So here, this residue, take it and go for flame test. You see the crimson red color, beautiful color. You say that, but there also you get a red crimson red color, right? Prominent deep red color. Though this is confirming, or uh, this indicates the presence of the uh, strontium there. But here, that same flame test became a confirmatory test here okay because that has a strong uh, lot of from other salt also and uh, so that would have given deep red color but here you have crimson red color is it crimson red is like brick red right mm -hmm. in between uh, you know it's not brick red is it uh, like close to orange color okay that's a crimson red crimson red color okay so here if you get residue you are doing this thing if you are not getting residue, or even if you get residue, residue are separating, that clear solution are taking, and you are adding ammonium oxalate and warm it, and white precipitate indicates the calcium. It's a calcium oxalate. It's a very, very well known salt, right? This is also, uh, you know, uh, quantitative analysis for calcium is possible with the calcium oxalate or using diametric method. So, calcium oxalate is the one which, which forms in the body, also, probably you know that one. So, <clears throat> So this, this precipitate, you take the flame test of this precipitate, you see brick red color that confirm the calcium here. Okay, so the flame test, what you did in the first portion, preliminary test, that become confirmatory test for the both strontium and the calcium, but when only after doing proper group separation, taking the precipitate which is coming out of the group separation, then you show if it was only simple, only one salt, strontium chloride or strontium nitrate alone given to you, you would have got the answer first itself. But because we had mixed up two salts, so you have to do systematically, then only confirm every anion and every cation, especially cation. If you don't do systematic group separation, you will not able to get even if you do same sample for two days you will not able to get it but the smart students who do quickly this group separation they will be completing experiment within half an hour also just one test you, you just keep adding only three four uh, uh, you know uh, reagents continuously that's all right so proper group separation so uh, we'll be ending here because you will get this uh, 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 strontium for confirmation, but you are not going to stop the experiment to confirm that there is a presence or absence of potassium or ammonium and sodium separately. Okay, so assuming that you are going further, you have to anyway you have to go further, you have to do separately. This is not the good separation. So finally, you got the solution, right? So that solution, not from this one, right? Final solution from the first group separation here, right? From this thing, you are taking that solution alone. You are taking, and that solution you are adding cobalt nitrate and acetic acid. So the reactions mentioned here, you get yellow precipitate, which can form the potassium. Here, Nestle's reagent. Nestle's reagent is a many times exam question. What is the presence in the Nestle's reagent? What is the structure of this compound? All these things. Okay. So this Nestle's reagent, you add it, you get a red precipitate. Um, <clears throat> that confirm the presence of uh, ammonium cation here and uh, again you are going to do 
same flame test what you did in the preliminary all right so that the, the you are taking that final solution which is coming from the book separation this solution you are touching the platinum wire and show to the um, bunsen burner flame you see the golden yellow color of the flame so that is what confirming sodium but and i told you when you see the golden yellow color in the preliminary test you say that presence may be the presence of sodium but here it confirm how you are writing here you are doing all this thing and finally say that golden yellow color was seen or golden yellow color appeared confirm the presence of sodium same test when you are writing one experiment one experiment when you are writing procedure first time when you are writing the flame test in the preliminary test you said maybe the presence of sodium here you are writing that i said that it confirm the presence of sodium okay while you are writing this experiment this part of the procedure okay so this is how we how to do proper analysis of any salt given to you in the laboratory right so uh, you know the uh, good thing in the bad time is that when you do actual experiment in lab we never explain so systematically taking everything one by one you see that i started at 2 10 almost 1 hour 45 minutes uh, is gone okay so normally we don't spend this much time in explaining everything and uh, this is what a good thing from the bad time so that you have really explain that you no know, um exactly how you are going systematically uh, for every uh, reaction and confirm the compound and i also explain how are you going to write the procedure of any experiment what you have done in this thing so this means that when you are doing experiment as i showed um, in the first that you no know, you will be taking notebook and write a three column every experiment when you are doing that experiment to write this one i have had this was had and this was had it was absorbed and presence or absence something like that you will keep writing every day in the laboratory in observation notebook but because you are writing in the laboratory observation notebook as and as and when you are doing experiment you may not write it properly or clearly so that is what you are taking it to record and write systematically clearly that's what called a record notebook okay so this is how we have to do experiment so let us hope at least one day we will be coming back to lab sometime end of this year uh, so we will be actually really enjoy the chemistry by doing this experiment but this experiment uh, practically uh, frankly saying uh, let me stop sharing here frankly saying this experiment the entire qualitative analysis of salt analysis you will not able to really use it in your uh, uh, career for example you get a job in a company or you will be doing phd in somewhere you will not be really using this experiment somewhere but the basic idea of this thing is that how we are going to handle any glass vase in a lab and how you are going to develop your observation skill right even one drop how it happens and it goes and touches that how this precipitate is forming whether this precipitate is forming or not that observation skill what you are developing and changing color observing that one what you are developing okay how to handle chemical small quantity that is what well, of course not that you will not be using anywhere but you will be using somewhere rarely but basically this idea of getting the feeling about the chemistry you know until school days you would have studied cadmium when react with sulfide cadmium sulfide form this is just memorizing and writing exam i pass also but when you happen to do actually that experiment and see that golden color of the cadmium sulfide you feel really happy for that one whatever you study in textbook that you are seeing practically right that's the idea of this experiment but uh, in a, you get a chance to do this thing okay so this is what i want to convey today uh, i think you, if you have any question you can ask me i'll put up these two uh, uh, document file in our um, um, uh, google drive classroom drive you can download and see it 
so um uh panda sir Bhaskar, anything Bhaskar you want to add? Uh, no, no, Marli. Uh, that's it. Yeah, fine. Panda so, sir. Yeah. So, uh, actually, as we are, the, the present situation is not good. We could not go to lab to do any experiment to record and demonstrate you. But as you suggested in the first class, we will search some net and find out an appropriate video, which you can see the uh, experiments in the 